We are live. It's the Sports Memo Podcast, Saturday College Basketball, March Madness, Conference Tournament Edition with Mid-Major Matt. Mid-Major Matt, welcome to the pod. How are you? Uh, doing well, Drew. We've already got madness. Missouri Valley loses their top two seeds. You've got the number one seed in the Big South gone. Our Hampton Pirates are playing once again on Sunday. So the madness has truly arrived. Oh, the Hampton Pirates with Jermaine Morrow. They're uh, rolling, winning as a uh, double digit underdogs mid-major Matt called it today he's got a five percenter up on Saturday's card guys check it out sportsmemo.com we're going down the card here on Saturday's big card for March 7th we're talking late on Friday night here let's start off uh towards the top of the card here Matt in the SEC we're talking 605 606 noon eastern tip time here Auburn Tigers at the Tennessee Volunteers looks like Tennessee minus two in the hook in Knoxville, 137 the total here, Matt. Well, if people have followed me, they know, unfortunately, I know because it's your alma mater, but I, I have not been a believer in Auburn. I just really haven't. I think they are one of the most uber athletic teams in the country, but they don't play a lot of defense, and it doesn't seem like they run a lot of offense. I do like Samir Dowdy, but it seems like at times him and McCormick get away from running an offense. You know, Bruce Pearl's constantly yelling on the sideline. It's shown as of late. They've lost four of their last six, three straight on the road, including some pretty poor teams on the road. When you look at Auburn's numbers, they're 40th in two-point percentage, but uh, 318th in three-point percentage. So they're not hitting the threes very well right now. Um, they're a team that bangs it inside. They've got a lot of bigs. They've got some solid guys inside. So we do like that. Um, they're 128th in pace, which is slightly better than average. And we're getting some reasonable totals involving Auburn. And I've been, you know, for the most part, when the situation has been right, I've been taking the over in Auburn games, and it's been doing pretty well. Well, they're playing Tennessee, and Tennessee's quite the opposite, 340. 14th in pace, 258th in terms of longest uh, possession time on offense, 285th in defensive possession time. Uh, They don't score very well from long range, 283rd in the country. But last two games, they've beaten Florida and Kentucky. They've got to be feeling good. They're five and three at home in conference play. These two teams played just a couple of weeks ago in Auburn. And the Tigers won 73-66 in a 66-possession game. I believe it went over the total, or it was one of the games that went like one or two points under the total. Tennessee was up 54-37 with 14-31 left to go. They blow the game in the end, and they lose outright to the Tigers. If you dig deeper into the numbers, Tennessee shot really well from inside and hit 16 of 17 from the free throw line. They did have 24 turnovers, though, so that was a concern. Auburn was a poor shooting team from uh, three-point land, but they had 15 offensive rebounds and were able to exert themselves inside. To me, uh, this could be one of these watch and win games. I- I'm very leery sometimes of the noon tip uh, tip offs, especially in some of these teams who start slow, because I'd look to the over potentially here. But with a noon tip and a Tennessee team that starts slow, neither team shoots the the three ball very well. This could be a watch and win type situation here. I certainly like the Volunteers at home. They've got to have some confidence right now, and you have to wonder what this Auburn team is thinking the way they've played as of late. They're the better team uh, athletically, but they're just not playing it right now and 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 Tennessee is in a better form right now and guys we got like five or six games we're going to hit on here in the uh best bet at the end uh this game Matt you know Tennessee isn't a team I've been involved with a lot I know they're coming on uh, as of late but um Auburn like you kind of touched on I just don't think they're they're nearly as as talented on the offensive end as they were last year they're still really good really well coached I I don't think they're going to be going to the final four unfortunately out there for Auburn fans but uh Matt, I, I'll say this, and I, I'm interested in your opinion on this, because I know you know a lot about the new guards for Auburn, but if if um, Jared Harper was still on this Auburn team, and what I mean by that is Jared Harper was the point guard last year, short guy. He's actually in the Phoenix Suns organization. I don't know if he's gotten a sniff at the NBA level, but uh, it, just watching him last year on the outside, and he would beat his guy off the dribble – Almost every time, actually, I, every time I saw him, he would beat him. And then he would either dish out for an open three, get a layup, or just dish for a dunk to one of the big boys down down low. And this year, they don't really have that. And that's when they were clicking last year. That's what I think the main difference is. I mean, outside of that, having Harper on that team, I just don't think they have a guy as talented as him. 
Yeah, you know, you look at the guys who regularly play minutes and the three point percentages are terrible. And if you can't and, and you look at an Auburn team and if you collapse the paint on them and make guys like Dowdy and McCormick shoot from long range. I mean, you know, Dowdy is a 48 percent shooter from two point range, which I guess is not terrible if you're a guard. McCormick is 43 percent. But like they go as Wiley, Okoro and Purifoy and McLemore go. And those are the guys who shoot better. But like you're right. Guard play is definitely certainly different. Now, as much as I don't like Auburn, if they get the right team in the first round of the tournament, they could win the game. But if they get one of these lively one bid teams, then, yeah, Auburn could certainly be a one and done. I do like Bruce Pearl. I just don't know if I like his system. It doesn't seem like they run a lot of plays. It seems like they feed off of emotion. They are a very cocky team at times that I feel like if you punch them back, like they're like, "Ooh, I don't necessarily love that. So. Like Auburn playing down the stretch. The problem is any value I had in fading them in the in the tournament coming up in a couple of weeks is probably gone now because of how they're playing so poorly down the stretch. Yeah, and it's more than just uh, you know bet on Auburn at home, fade them away, which obviously this one is at Tennessee, and and it shows in the line when you talk when you talk about you know is there value pretty much is what you're saying on betting against or on Auburn. I mean, it's minus two and a half here and Auburn's the ranked team in this matchup. Now it's almost like the odds makers are onto what we're talking about here, Matt. Well, and, and by the way, no one should really give up 78 points at home to Texas A&M. Buzz Williams doing a great job with the Aggies and everything, and uh, they're going to make that next step next year probably, but they play at a really slow pace. It was a 72 possession game. You know, Texas A&M shouldn't score 78 points on you on the road if you're a legitimate team, and, and that's what happened. They shouldn't lose at home to Texas A&M. No offense to the Aggies, but like Auburn's got to take care of business there. Matt, we got another one here, 2.30 Eastern tip, 6.35, 6.36, this one on Fox. That first game on ESPN2, uh, early tip there, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. This one on Fox, Seton Hall at Creighton, two ranked teams here, Matt. 151.5 being the total, minus three in the hook, that's Creighton at home. So these are two of my teams that are in my quote unquote futures portfolio. And I'll be really interested to see in the uh, in the path that they have. I'm definitely going to be interested in probably at least one of these teams. And by the way, when they come out with the tournament, uh, uh, the conference bets for the tournament, I'm definitely taking the over on the Big East. I think the Big East is going to have the best tournament of any of these conferences uh, in, in March. And it's probably because of these two, and it's because of Villanova. Providence is coming on. If Xavier makes it, like, I think the Big East is going to have a big tournament, and these are the two reasons why. These two teams are playing for the Big East championship. Now, there's certain situations where they could be sharing with somebody. It's about the, essentially, they're playing for the one seed here, and you can kind of see why. Let's start out with Seton Hall. I mean, Miles Powell has been ridiculous. The Mamashvili kid, I believe I said that right. He's been really good. His injury earlier in the season got guys like Romaro Gill and some of the other guys on that team some extra time, the Roden kid. You know, I think Seton Hall has exactly what you need to potentially win the tournament. Good coach in Kevin Willard, a, guy, a senior in Miles Powell, a good bench, and a solid style. Now, they're 3-3 three and three in their last six. Uh, but on the road, though, they're seven and one in conference. This is a team that's not afraid to win away from home, and they've scored 70 or more in every contest. You look at Creighton. I love Creighton's offense, and I know their defense gets a bad rap. But when you look at the numbers, I mean, they're not terrible. They're not great. They're not like top 100 in very many categories or any categories, but like they're not in the 200s and 300s in a lot of places like people would make you think. Creighton at home has scored 92. 59, 78, 77, 94, 93, 81, and 91. They're top 50 in two-point percentage, three-point percentage, and free throw percentage. Uh, they've won six games at home by double digits. First meeting between these two a couple weeks ago, Creighton went into Seton Hall and won 87-82. It was a 76-possession game. The two things that stuck out to me, Creighton got five double-digit scorers, and Miles Powell shot three of 16 from the field. That's not going to happen again. Miles Powell is going to get more than 12 points in this game. I think we see a juiced up atmosphere. I think this is the type of game that's going to see a lot of points. Um, I don't necessarily have a lean on the side. I could see Seton Hall going in there and winning. I could also see Creighton blowing him out, especially if they're hot early. This could be one of those situations. Definitely love the over here. But this could be one of the situations early on. If Creighton's hitting their threes, you may want to hit the Jays in-game live betting. 
or if it's a nip and tuck type game, it's close throughout. You can get some, you know, maybe Creighton gets a five, six point lead, but you still think Seton Hall could cover that or win. Then maybe live bet Seton Hall in the game. But I think this is going to be one of the best games of the day. I think it's going to be one of the most fun games of the day. And you'll hear from me as we do more of these podcasts about how much I love Seton Hall and Creighton coming forward in the uh, field of 68. And mid-major, Matt, you talk about Big East Conference Tournament over bets. That is for uh, the, the sports books out there will do uh, a whole conference. And you can bet the line that they put out on uh, all the teams from the conference in March Madness Tournament, how many wins they get as a conference, correct? Yeah, so usually when I head out to Vegas and we're doing it again, coronavirus be damned, we're going out there to um, – <laughs> And my dad and I sit down, we go to the Westgate and we sit down and there's a whole bunch of stuff that the Westgate provides. And that one of the bets that we love to do is the total. So like if it's Seton Hall, Creighton, Villanova, Xavier, Providence, and I think there's somebody, a uh, Butler, they'll sit out, they'll list all the teams. You have to put the bet in by the time the first game starts. So if any of them are dating, you got to do it by Tuesday or Wednesday. And let's say there's six teams there. They put seven and a half, eight and a half wins. So you go through. And what I like to do for something like that is instead of filling out a bracket with the team name, I like filling out the bracket with the conference. So instead of having Villanova move on, I have the Big East move on. If there's a coin flip game, I'll put both conferences in there and give each a half a point. So let's say Villanova is playing a team in the SEC that I think has a chance to beat them, but I think Villanova could win. So I'll give Villanova half a point there, and then we'll go so on and so forth down the line. And if there's things like, let's say I come up with 12 wins for the Big East and the number's nine and a half, I'll take the over. Let's say, I mean, we'll talk about it. The Pac-12, I'm fading the Pac-12. Depending upon what the number is, I'm going under because I think most of them are one or done. It's one of my favorite bets of the tournament is, uh, is betting these conference totals. So if the Pac-12 gets, what, six teams, some people are saying? Ugh. What do you think the conference – because I've never bet this, Matt. It sounds awesome. This is my first year living in Vegas, so I plan on it. What do you think, like, the Westgate and all these sports books will put out on, on the Pac-12 if they get that many teams in? Well, they're probably going to give – well, it depends on the line, obviously. You could kind of figure it out before – I mean, look, if you don't go when they first put this stuff out, when the lines come out, you could kind of figure it. If there's a team that's a slight favorite or a slight underdog, they'll probably make it a half. So let's say Oregon is a five-point favorite against their first opponent. That'll They'll count that as a win. And then if they think Oregon can win their next game and so on and so forth. So I'm guessing they base it off of the lines. The closer the line, the more likely they'll be a half as opposed to a whole. Let's say Oregon's a 12 point favorite over their first round team well they're going to count that as a win so they'll make it one there'll be a lot of halves so they try and stay away from the pushes and it'll move so let's say in theory now i've never been there when they've opened you'll get the chance to do that potentially it may open up at minus 110 on both sides but there may be tons of juice out there if they get a ton of things on the over then you might get a minus 150. I've gotten conference win totals. I've taken unders that have been plus 130 or plus 135 because either A, they, they're too stubborn to move the number, or B, they just think they have the right number and they're willing to accept all this money because they think they're right. So it's it's a it's a favorite bet of mine. Um, not only do they have that, they have, you know, like Creighton, how many wins could they win? Is it over one and a half? And so like that, like, and who goes further, Creighton or Seton Hall and stuff like that. So... I love, you know, look, you're going to see a lot of the bets on my account for the NCAA tournament, but some of my favorite bets are these prop bets that allow you to think outside the box a little bit. And, and will you be giving these out on Twitter if you when you bet them? Oh, yeah, certainly. When I get down to Vegas, I'll take pictures of them and post them on my Twitter account. And I'll say there's usually one or two that I post bigger bets to. Now, I'm not I work in radio and, you know, I don't make bazillions of dollars like all of, like you, Drew, and I'm not living in the high life or anything. But, I'll yeah, I'll certainly put my uh, my, my my leans and stuff out there. Um, I won't take every conference. And certainly, as I said, you know, Tuesday night, you're going to get two teams from big conferences. So if you want to bet those conferences, you're going to have to bet it before their first four game tips off on Tuesday. Ah, uh, the big money mid-major, Matt. You're rolling in the big money. You got you got the girls all over you, man. I'm just trying to be like you when you get out here to Vegas. No, 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 Drew. I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna drop your name when I get out there, and then there's, the doors are just gonna open for me. Nah, I'm not sure it will get you very far. But uh, let's get into Louisville versus Virginia. We got the Cavs minus one in Charlottesville, one fourteen and a half. Matt, low total here. It's low for a reason, though. What are you thinking? Well, 
I, I, first off, you know, when we've done this, I'm done with overs. We talked about that Liberty under, excuse me, I'm done with unders. We talked about that Liberty under at length. Probably people were rather tired of hearing about it. It had a like 45, 47 point first half, and then it was too close and it went over the total. I've done two UVA unders this season. The first one was the under in that Syracuse game in Charlottesville where they couldn't score. And then the two teams hit like nine threes in overtime and it went over. The second time was that uh, UVA Wake Forest game where Wake Forest had like five guys injured and it still managed to go over because it went in overtime. So I'm never recommending an under once again. The reason why the under is interesting, quote unquote, here, the first meeting between these two, Louisville won 80 to 73. OK, that was one of UVA's best best shooting efforts. They made 11 threes in that game and shot almost 56 percent from the field. The irony of that first game was it was a 59 possession game and it still went to 80 73. So let's take a look at some of the numbers here. Everybody knows about UVA. They're 353rd in pace, which I believe is the slowest pace in America. Um, on offense, they have the slowest t- tempo in the country 353rd possession length on offense. On defense, teams are taking the 351st longest time. So there are two teams that are struggling more on defense to find open shots. UVA, with all this recent success they've had, they're still 311th in three-point offense. Tomas Walden Tensai, who was their three-point shooter, was really hot. Now teams are getting out on him, and he's starting to cool off a little bit. Every game that UVA plays is essentially decided by three points or less. Okay. Every game, it feels like they've had, I think, just three conference games that were decided by 10 points or more. The first game of the year against Syracuse, um, I believe there was a Boston College game where there was a big game. And then there was another game that was decided by double digits. They've scored 65 or less in eight conference home games. Louisville's a hard team to figure out. I was talking to Dallin Cuff today uh, on Friday from the ACC Network about this game, and he says that Louisville goes as their guards go, and their freshman point guard is who is the guy that stirs the drink for them. Well, I don't love a freshman point guard against the pack line defense. They've lost three road games this year by six at Georgia Tech, by 15 at Clemson, and by 15 at Florida State. That's their three losses in conference. They've lost three straight. Um, Teams take a long time to find possessions against them, too. 321st in terms of possession length on defense. To me, this line is really short. And I understand why it's really short, because UVA plays nothing but single-digit games. But in a close, low-scoring affair, especially in Charlottesville with so much on the line, I think this number is screaming for you to take Virginia. Here's the thing. If it's at minus one, I may look at the money line. Now, you might be better at this stuff than I am. I'm thinking the juice is going to be pretty close, whether the money line is minus 110 and minus one is going to be minus 110. So why not take the money line? If Virginia wins by one, there's no push. You win outright. If it starts creeping up, then that's a personal decision. You could either buy the half a point. That's personal preference. If it gets to two and the juice and the money lines at minus 130, whatever it is, I think Virginia wins this game. It's just how comfortable do you feel them in a potential short game that could be very tight as to whether you take the money line or not? Uh, Mid-major, Matt, I, I always go by the rule, you know, I'm just a side or totals better just because I like to stick to that minus 110 and it's, you know, quote unquote, the kind of smarter bets to be making as a uh, uh, as a sports better. The one time I'll go to money line here is is minus one and a half. If I'm laying the one in the hook, just because if it does land on the one, you, you, it goes from loss to win. That's the one time I do go on money line. Minus one, I'm okay with the push, but uh, I, I get it if people want to if people want to fire away on that money line, man. Right. It's, it's a personal preference thing. It's just like, you know, when I suggest teasers and stuff like that, it's personal preference. You know, there are right and wrong ways to do it. You hear all the time from certain people that this is the right way to do it. But I mean, it's personal preference. If you feel more comfortable with the money line taking out the push, I think Virginia wins this game. The problem with taking the spread is that they've played so many two and three and four point games that you're now worrying about whether or not you're going to get push in the play, whereas you could just take the money line. And then if they win by one, you win. In and instead of pushing overall mid-major Matt let's do uh and guys check out mid-major Matt on sportsmemo.com he does have a five percent Saturday play here in college basketball that's the highest rated play you can have at sportsmemo.com he's got one up here and uh if you're a new customer if you've uh, never never been with sportsmemo.com you can get a uh, huge discount here get seventy dollars off one week all access to any Handicapper at sportsmemo.com uh, using the coupon code DM49 at checkout. And uh, mid-major Matt is as good, if not the best choice 
for March Madness here. We got 745-746 here. Give uh, the listeners a, a late night game here, Matt. 9.30 Eastern tip. Purdue Fort Wayne. Yes, that you heard that correct. Purdue Fort Wayne at South Dakota State. I believe that is the Jackrabbits. I might be wrong. Minus seven and a hook. That's South Dakota State lane. I'm guessing at home, maybe a tournament game, 140 and a half. Obviously, this game's off my radar here, mid major Matt. Purdue Fort Wayne, haven't heard of them very much, but I'm guessing you know something. So the fun story about Purdue Fort Wayne, IPFW to some, is that a couple of years ago, I would say four or five years ago, I discovered this team and they were one of the uh, best teams in the country in terms of covering. They had a great offense. They had a guy named John Conchar who plays now for the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, and I told Kelly, so if a lot of you who follow Kelly in Vegas, ask her about that. I told her about they're the Mastodons and they would play a ton of overs and they would cover a ton of numbers. And um, so I told her about it and we made so much money on them. And that's when they were really good. And then, you know, I, I started online um, following their coach and stuff like that. And it, it's all great. And so they were a great story. And that's kind of where we started to get it. And over the time that I followed them, there were IPFW and then there were Purdue, Fort Wayne, Indianapolis. And then they, they've changed their name a bunch of times. That's all pointless stuff when it comes to the handicapping. This is the Summit League first round action. You've got this game is not being played at South Dakota State's campus, but it is being played in South Dakota. So when you look at um, Ken Palm, you'll see it says semi home game instead of home game because this is played essentially in the state of South Dakota. Uh, South Dakota State is 13 and three in conference play. They're feeling rather angry right now, coming off a two point loss to rival North Dakota State in o overtime. They've got 10 double-digit victories in this league. The team is number two in the country in two-point percentage, field goal percentage. They are so efficient on offense. 59th and three-point percentage on offense, so they can hit the two, they can hit the three. And on defense, they're pretty good against the three as well, 46th and three-point percentage defense. The Dons, let's go over to them. They are 295th in turning the ball over on just over 20% of their possessions. They're turning the ball over defensively. They rank 326 against the two 269th against the three. Well, there's our instant matchup right there. You've got the second best team when it comes to shooting the two against the 326 best team, uh, worst team when it comes to defending the two IPFW has lost six games in conference by double digits. Let's go over the two meetings. Back on February 16th, San Diego State won 75-64 at home in a 67-possession game. They shot 68% uh, from two-point land and were plus nine on the boards. Let's go back to January 11th. San Diego State won 70-61 to on the road in another 67-possession game. They shot over 50% from the field in that one. The Dons went 4 of 26 from three-point land, and that was at home. So that's not a good sign. To me, 7.5, it's an interesting number here because you want obviously you need them to win by 8. My recommendation is this. What's a, you said this game was a later game, Drew. Here's what I think. This is one of these classic contests where I'm going to wait. And I'm going to see if I can milk even a half a point out of value here. Maybe there's an IPFW fan who bets some money on here and it goes down to seven. I like it at seven and a half. I like it better if that number goes down. If it starts going up, I'm okay with leaving it off my card. We talk about this here, Drew. Uh, you know, one of the things we've always harped on is the advantage the gambler has is that there's so many games and you can walk away. Vegas wants you to bet on every game. Vegas wants you to bet on every number. But you don't have to. You can walk away. So. Basically, I like it at seven and a half. I like it more if it goes down. I'm willing to walk away if it goes up to eight, eight and a half, nine. Uh, you could always, you know, walk away from it. Maybe it's a tight start to the game. You in-game live bet it. You get a shorter number on South Dakota State. They win. You win your shorter number, and, and we're all happy. So seven and a half is okay. Less than seven and a half is better. Higher than seven and a half, walk away. Maybe in-game live bet it. Makes total sense. And, uh, Matt, we got the huge card here. It's getting late on Friday night, man. Um, did you want to throw out anything else before we get to uh, best bets? All right. So the other thing I wanted to throw out here. So Dayton has 
college game day this week. Um, there is a bunch of things, and this is not necessarily a play. It's more information for you, the viewers. So Dayton's got college game day this week. First time ever on campus that college game day is there. We've heard from other teams before. There was a team, I think, two or three weeks ago who had college game day on their campus. They lost the game. And then after the game, a bunch of the kids talked about, you know, it was a lot involved. There was a lot of pressure involved. You know, the eyes of the country were on us. We had all this extra, you know, obligations involving the media. I'll even take it back to this in college football. James Madison University, we've talked about them often. They had college game day on their campus for the Richmond game. I don't know, it was four or five years ago. Richmond, yeah. Rich, Richmond won that game. And we heard from a lot of the players afterwards from JMU who said, yeah, it was great that college game day was here. It was great to get all the attention. But there was an extra pressure involved, and there was an extra thing that kind of messed up the routine a little bit. Now, granted, look, coaches are going to do whatever they can, and Dayton's going for that undefeated conference record. So I'm just saying, Dayton may seem like a really good bet here, but maybe they slow start. Maybe they're not the best bet in the first half. Maybe it's the second half bet. I'm just making people aware here. I have no play here. I'm just simply handing out some information that say, Dayton with college game day there could be a little hungover early on. It could be very interesting. First time ever on campus and playing for an undefeated conference record and potentially playing for a one seed if some other things happen in front of them. So just a lot of things swirling around Dayton's campus here. Um, I, I think that that's, you know, just something to consider if you're looking at this game on uh, Saturday night. All right. Good stuff. Follow him on Twitter at mid major Matt, myself on Twitter at drew Martin bets guys. Feel free to uh, reach out with any questions you have. We actually got a couple questions for this podcast, Matt. Um, we can answer them at the end before we cut out. But uh, I guess let's go to to best bets, man. What do you want to leave the people with in terms of a uh, best bet on Saturday's card? I think it's Virginia. I think it's, I mean, I'll say my best bets, Virginia money line. It depends on your, as we said, personal preference. I think Virginia wins this game. I just think they're in a zone right now. Virginia is also a team that I may look to put a future down, depending upon what their seed is. There is, if they're in that eight, nine game, there is not a one seed that shouldn't be scared of Virginia right now. Um, I think the Wahoos are playing some great basketball. They're home. They've had some, they have revenge on their mind. The short number might be a trap, but I'm taking, in Virginia, I think they win. So my best bets that my personal preference, the money line at minus one, as it goes up, that's your personal preference. But they play a ton of close games, so be careful if that number keeps going up. You may still want to consider the money line. All right, Virginia, the Cavs for uh, mid-major Matt's best bet here. Matt, we got um a couple questions. We'll run down here some good ones actually from Mr. Welch on Twitter at twenty eight i Welch says teams that are bet on and teams that are fade going into conference and NCAA tournament, Big Ten fade in NCAA tournament, question mark. Um, I'll start off San Diego State, Matt. I know they, they just actually won against Boise State. I watched them in person uh, yesterday at the Thomas and Mac here. And I think something's wrong with the Aztecs. I really do. They're just not playing as well ever since they lost to what UNLV, uh, what about 10, 10, 11 days ago. I, I mean, the team's talented, but I do think something's wrong here. Um, they've gotten off to really slow starts. I would look to fade San Diego State in the first half and really for the full game um, for, for the rest of the Mountain West Conference tournament here and also into March Madness. Now, that, that first game that they have, because they still might get a one seed, is against the 16 seed. That's always a little tricky. But uh, don't be surprised if the Aztecs get bounced a little early here, Matt. Uh, you want to throw out any bet on fade teams? And also, do you think the Big Ten is a fade? Well, let's say this, Drew. I mean, what if Virginia is the 8-9 versus San Diego State? I'll take the uh, Cavaliers all day in that situation. I think if you throw the kind of defense San Diego State throws at teams back at them, I don't think they're going to win. So, Drew, we just talked about a corollary right there. If Virginia is in that side of the bracket with San Diego State, bye-bye Aztecs. I'm, I'm certainly fading them. Um, teams I'm not – we talked about Auburn. I'm fading Auburn. Uh, I'm fading Rutgers if somehow they make it because if you can't win outside of your home gym, um, you're not – worth it in the tournament. Uh, I'm fading almost every Pac-12 team, depending upon the matchups. Like if you look at some of the teams on there and I've talked about on Twitter, like I don't believe in the Pac-12 other than Oregon and even Oregon, if they get the right team, I'm fading them too. So like Pac-12 and Big Ten teams, at least the bottom of the Big Ten, especially, you know, the teams who probably shouldn't be in there, though, that's what I'm fading. I don't think the Big Ten's that as good. I was listening to Chris Patola on ESPN Radio and he said exactly what I was thinking, that there's a lot of 
teams that are just winning at home. And Maryland, uh, not in the first round, but like uh, how good is Maryland really? So to me in the tournament, I'm looking to fade as many Big Ten and Pac-12 teams as I can right now. All right, Matt, on uh, on a bunch of fades there, guys. And I'm looking for we got a couple questions here, Matt, and I'm trying to find them. Uh, Do you have the, the other questions up there? Yeah, we have a question about Houston. Uh, we okay. had a question about the viability of Houston. Now, I don't remember what the guy's Twitter handle oh, is. Oh, I got it always... here. I got it here. We got John Bokma on Twitter, at Johnny's Crib. Cool, cool. Uh, at some there, we got uh, his handle's pretty cool. At Johnny's Crib. Is Houston a legit threat to make a run to the Elite Eight? Talking about the Cougars there, Matt. So when I look at their Kempom page, which I have up now as we sit here, there's a couple of things that are good. There's a couple of things that are bad. Good, they're the second best team at converting offensive rebounds. 38.8% of their misses, they're getting the offensive rebound. That's second best in the country. Um, They're one of the best of rebounding teams. The problem becomes here, they are 273rd when it comes to shooting two-pointers. Their offense is very hot and cold. You look now, they're 3-3 three and three in their last six. They play Memphis on Sunday. Obviously, there's no line in that game. Ken Palm projecting them to be a 10-point favorite at home against Memphis. This is all matchup-based here for Houston. If they get teams that are bigger and can certainly bang with them on the boards, I'd worry about. Plus, if you watch Houston, they've got a clutch-and-grab type of defense. You know, they're very physical. They're very handsy. And much like VCU, as I've watched over the years, the better VCU teams, if you get that wrong officiating crew who calls a lot of those fouls, then Houston's going to be in trouble. And so you have to figure out early on, is Houston getting away with their touch-and-grab or are they not getting away with it? You know, Quentin Grimes is a good player, um, but their offense is is basically shoot shots, miss it, get the rebound, put it in, or get fouled. They're a 73.3% free throw shooting teams. They've lost the teams are better than. Their losses are BYU, Oregon. They lost to Cincinnati, and then they lost to UConn, Memphis, SMU, Tulsa, Oklahoma State. So it's a hot and cold team. I'm talking about matchups here, Drew. I think if they get the right matchups down the stretch, they could certainly win. But if they get a bigger team or if they get an officiating crew who gets them in foul trouble, I think Houston could be a team that I'm looking to fade in, a, in the right situation. Great podcast, as always, been Major Man. Any last words here before we shut this down? No, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, really excited for these conference championship games as well. Don't forget, they'll be out later on Saturday morning. So if you're interested in the various championship games, those lines will be out Saturday morning. And as always, if you have any questions for any of us, make sure to tweet us and we'll try and do our best to answer them. Well said, Matt. Follow him on Twitter at MidMajorMatt. I'm on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. Guys, remember the coupon code DM49. Any new customers out there, $70 off. One week, all access, anybody at sportsmemo.com. Mid-Major Matt has his 5% play up at sportsmemo.com as well, guys. Best of luck. We'll talk on Monday.